You got it all set? Yes. All right. How many conservation members do we have remotely? We have a quorum now, Mike. We have four. So, Damon Tinio and Peter. Al. Peter said he was on. I heard Peter. Peter, are you on? Peter's on, yes. So, we've got Peter, Damon, Bob, and myself. We do have a quorum. So, we're officially opening uh, the conservation meeting today, December 22nd at 7.18. All right, we're going to skip opening the, the reviewing the mi minutes. Um, I had asked earlier if Tom Schultz was from Guarded Engineering is here. He was the first one on the list. Is Tom here? No, they issued a continuance. Um, I just uh, got an email from John Nina. Okay. For Goddard. So, you're on. Please introduce yourself. And Good evening. Thank you. Do we need to continue that meeting, Mike? Uh, yeah, we'll do that after. Before we before we close the meeting, we'll continue the uh, Hastings Street and Washington Street hearing. We haven't opened it. There's nobody. There's nobody here representing. Them, so uh, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Michael Dean from DNL Design Group. Well, here representing the owner and applicant. Of two Nipmuc Drive, which is Benny Pinto. He once again is the owner and applicant. This project is referred to as two Nipmuc Drive. So over here, this is Nipmuc Drive. It's essentially at the intersection of Nipmuc Drive and Route 16. This project was just in front of the commission two weeks ago, and through the discussions, they asked for some revisions or they can take another look at some of the topics that I'll just touch in briefly. Sure. So the lot is located 77,000 square foot lot here. The house is shown here in the orange or yellowish color. Access off of Netmont Drive. Uh, like I said, this was just in front of the commission two weeks ago. Peter LaVoy could not make it tonight. Something came up uh, last minute, so he, he was the presenter two weeks ago. Okay. So what you have is you have, like I said, Netmont Drive, Route 16, is a, a little the smaller cove of Lake Netmont proposed house, proposed driveway. So through that presentation and discussion, which I was not here, from what I understand, discussions with Peter LaVoy from my office, is that they wanted to analyze and take another look at the grading that was proposed on the original plan two weeks ago in front of the house, down towards the cove area. Okay. So we've done that and we have revised the grading um, in that particular area. Other than that, essentially the driveway septic system, those aspects have remained the same. So in, in doing that uh, reevaluation of that area in front of the house and down to the cove area, you can see what you have is the 25 foot no disturb zone here and the 50 foot no build zone. The original proposal mm -hmm. had a wall down at the 25 foot no build zone when the grading came up towards the house. This revision has minimized that, the work in that area by implementing a small retaining wall shown here, higher up on the landscape, and then we were able to move, this proposed silk fence is now 60 feet from the wetland, so we moved essentially everything back 35 feet and saving on, you know, so the limit of work is shown here in the yellow, which is the silk fence. So that has been pulled in, like I says, 35 feet from where it was. And now we're at 10, now we're 60 feet away, which is 10 feet out of that 50 foot no build zone. What's the difference in elevation from where the house is, you know, ground elevation, let's say the, the, the front yard, front lawn, the elevation there to the elevation of the water. Yeah, the front 
the concrete is 428, so it's about 426 the ground down to. Um, about my magnifiers. Yeah, that's why I can't. I can't. No, but it's also the color. I think one of the concerns we had uh, two weeks ago was Claire cutting that slope in order to yeah. um, get Well, that's what I'm trying to get at, Bob. I want to know what the elevation difference is from there to there. So it's around 426, and the proposal now goes down to the top of the wall is. Or twenty. So there's only about six or se six, six to eight feet of grade across the front of that now, down to the wall. Down to the wall. From yeah. the wall to the water. What's that? What's the difference from the top of wall to the water? What's it's essentially going to remain natural, but it's uh, four eighteen down to the water is. About ten feet lower than that, which will remain in the natural contour. And that grade, now there's no proposed contours there, so. Let me just show you this here. Have any of the members been out to see this? I'm not sure. I think th through the conversation Peter had mentioned, Peter Lavoy from my office had mentioned yeah. Peter May maybe wanted to uh, pay a visit. So in terms of grading, hold on, let me get yeah. this. So yeah, I drove by and looked at it. It's just a steep slope and it's rock. So I had concern with clearing all the, the whole slope. So I can't really see the plan at all. So I don't know what that lawn, even though it's they hold it, held it back from the 25 and the 50 foot, it's still in the buffer and for what purpose? It's a lawn, or I'm not quite sure how it's going to be used. So why couldn't it be left natural? So. Say that again, Peter. I'm sorry. So I, they've they've the pulled it back. That's good. So that yeah. they're not doing work in the 25 do not build or the 50 that's do not that's disturb. That's my question is the rest of the buffer. Why does that need to get biffed? Is there going to be a? I can't really see the plan at all. So, I, I'm wanting to hear the reason why they need to disturb the buffer on the front side. It's going to be quite a slope, even with a. Well, I don't know with a stone wall. Is it a flat area? How high is that? So okay. disturb the buffer on the front side. So if you could just explain to me what you're referring to as the front side, I'm sorry. Lakeside? Lakeside, yes. Immediately in front of the house? Yeah, I believe. Are there trees there now that are going to be cut down? So, and Peter, just so I'm understanding the buffer, are you talking about the 50 foot buffer or the buffer in general? I'm talking the 100 foot buffer. You're keeping out of the 50 foot buffer. That's good. So yep. then from 50 to 100 foot is the rest of the buffer. Yep. And not seeing it on the plan, I can't see if it's flat. If it's a three to one slope, are you going to use it for a yard? Is it just to clear the tree so you get a nice view of the lake? That's so there's a proposed wall that is about 10 feet. Hold on one second, please. <clears throat> so from the fifth, so about seven, so from the 50 foot buffer, there's a proposed wall now that's about just shy of 20 feet off of that 50 foot buffer. So that's 70 feet away from the uh, cold and the wetlands. And then the house at its narrower spot is 25, almost 30 feet away from the wall. And then there's a slight gradual grading for some transition in the front yard that needs to be established. 
And in some areas, the 100 foot buff, so that means the 100 foot buff is only one, one area of the house itself is only about seven feet off the house corner as proposed. So there certainly needs to be some clearing within the buffer zone to fit this in. And what's, what's there now? I mean, what are the wood, wood I apologize for not being here for the last meeting. I was out of, I was out of the country. So. so there's woods. It's a, it's a mound. It's, it's, it's a fairly steep slope. There's right, a so lot of rock a, there. It's yeah. It has its challenges, but oh, I'm sure it does. We brought that. We brought everything in from the last meeting, 35 feet. And it was my understanding that was, that was the concern. Uh, the, the concern was in general for a hundred foot buffer zone. This certainly isn't a hundred foot buffer zone, but we're out of the 50 foot. No build zone. We're working within the buffer. We need access up to there. It is a challenging site. This lot's been through probably about three renditions. That this is probably the third that I know of. And you know, I think you know, I think I, I think it's a pretty good plan that's presented at this point. I mean, I, mean, I think in in general we allow people to work in the buffer zone. Um, as long as they're out of the no build and no disturb zone. So, I mean, if it's just for grading, I mean, uh, I mean, there shouldn't be an issue. Peter, did he address the concerns that you asked for? He went a long ways to making it better. Yes. However, I still, uh, the buffer is the buffer. And yes, we let people do work in the buffer if there is need. If there's no need, there shouldn't be work in the buffer. So I can understand you need to grade around the house. Uh, I guess my question is, okay, from the 10 foot grading, is it gonna be a yard or is it a still a steep slope going down to the wall? I can't see the plan. Six foot drop, right? The, yeah. top, the top of the wall elevation, Peter, is 420. Correct. And what's the grade at the house? I'll get to it. I'm correct. It's 420, top of the wall. The proposed house, the top of concrete of the foundation is 428. So I'm sure the foundation is going to stick to a minimum of two feet out of the ground. So it looks like the, the ground will be, will be at... 426 so that would give you a six foot slope what's what's the the distance from the from the house to the wall it's about 30 feet or so so yeah, there's, there's going to be a slope a 30 foot long slope to get down to six feet off them to come up six feet So basically, it's just what you have to do. It's a challenging lot. They have to, you know, it's a buildable lot. He wants, he's coming to work in the buffer zone. This is basically grading around the house and to, and to construct the wall to stay away from the lake and yeah. keep everything natural beyond the wall. So I think that that's pretty good. From what I can see, anybody else? What do you what, think, Mike? What, what kind of walls are going to be? It would just be a stone wall. wall. Stone wall. Yeah. Stone from the property, or or. I can't guarantee that, but I. No, we have no. We have plenty of rock there, so I would I would imagine <laughs> that unless it's unless it's you know a higher end wall where they can't they need yeah. this particular stone. Yeah. No, it makes sense to use the stone from the property. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, uh, I apologize for not being here at the last meeting because yeah. these are questions I would ask. Sure. On the lake side of that wall, what's the drop off from the top of the wall? Four feet. Four feet. Yep. We kept it at that four foot max yep. threshold yep. for a couple different Is there reasons. going to be any type of fence or, or railing to keep there's, there's none the kids from tumbling down that and dropping off a four foot fall will, when you land on your head will hurt? Yeah, I mean. Because why I'm asking that is if you brought the height of the wall up a little more and that six foot slope in the 30 feet would be more gradual. But the 
fall potential on the other side. Yeah. I mean, you could you could put a stairway in it to get access to. The, is that a beach there? No, I don't think so. Yeah, cool. The stairs there, the old um, carousel used to be right there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the old carousel was was like probably right here. And the old stairs are shown oh, off that way. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's where it is. I was thinking it's up over by no, it's right wow. on, on the other side over by the uh, means lot. No, Nipunk and Route 16 intersections right here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Right. And that that was my main concern. This is Lake Nipunk, and it's uh, taken out more trees and green, and the lake is all taking a lot of hits. It's not one big hit. It's lots of, lots of slices and dices. So as yeah, the lakes have taken minimize. a lot of real good hits because everybody's upgrading their septic system and putting tight tanks in. So, if anything, this is a buildable lot. We just have to follow the DEP regulations. That's true. Did you go out and look at it? I didn't know when the site visit was. I would like to have, and I mentioned that earlier, but. Well, I, like I've been on the property and it's, uh, yeah. the, you know, the, 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 it's a challenge. That rock is gonna, they're gonna have to do a lot of blasting in there, but uh, it's all, it's all pretty flat down the bottom. But like you said, they, from what I saw on the plan, you know, they're gonna go into that. You're gonna, you know, they gotta do a little work, a little blasting, but. I mean, they're they're out of the they're out of the fifty foot, no disturb and no build. Um, I mean, where do we go from it from with it from here? Right, right. Remember a few years back when all that back bunch and stuff was put in at the bottom. That's from there up is where this goes. Well, there's a question. Someone has their hand up. Do you have any questions? Um, I had Looks a question. Like Aunt Aza's got her name, hand up. Yeah, I had a okay. question. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Um, I did on Lake Nipmunk. I think that the hundred foot buffer is a lot different than a hundred foot buffer from another location because it is the lake. And also that steep slope. So my question is, is, is the natural vegetation going to be kept in that 100 foot buffer or are there changes that are going to be made in there? There's going to be natural vegetation but to the fifth, to the wall. Correct, Mike? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's, there's alterations within the 100 foot buffer zone, correct? Right, but not in the 50 foot. There's, there's some alteration, so, when I'm saying I'm up, we're out of the 50 foot buffer, it was in the area that I thought was the major concern at the last hearing. Uh -huh. In front of the house down to the cove in this area, yes, we are out of the 50 foot buffer. As this driveway needs to be placed for access to the upland, we will be encroaching on some of the 50 foot buffer, but that's for access due to a lot of several other aspects of the site, such as the septic system. You know, this is the only location the driveway can go. so. You need access to the site. And that's the septic system? Oh, yes, sure. Oh, yeah, over there. Red, yeah. mm -hmm. And they put a detention basin at the bottom too, which was nice. Yes. Basin so all the water that comes down the driveway has a place to go, which is, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. Uh, are you rip wrapping the lake side of the driveway? Down along here on the? Yeah. Uh, on the no, it's not proposed to be rip wrapped at this point. So is the slope going to continue like uh, like the grade that it is, though? Because that should drop off fairly quick, no? Yeah, it does drop off fairly quick. It's it's designed. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to control, you know, the water and and uh, wash out as you're building. So that's right at just about three to one. So three to one should be able to hold if they do it properly. But you know, if 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 that would be one of your concerns, I don't I don't see any problems trying to rip wrap that slope. I don't 
I can propose that or modify it. Yeah, you got to have the stone there, so yeah, it's easy that. enough. Yeah. And it would look good. Yep. Any other questions? I mean, um, I, I did, Ann Mazur, I did have a question just following up with what Peter said. Um, still within that 100 foot buffer, is beyond the first 50 feet, is that going to be lawn or will it be natural vegetation as much as possible? It looks like a driveway has to go through there, but other than that, can the natural vegetation be left just for filtration to the lake and, and erosion control? And you're talking from the 50 foot to the house, correct? Yeah, 50 foot to the 100 foot buffer, yes. Uh, Peter, I'm assuming that that's going to be lawn. Yeah, it's going to be about 34 to 30 to 30 feet right. plus that will be lawn and that's it will terminate at that wall. And then downgrading of the wall, right. that'll be. That's, that's where it becomes, yeah. you know, what is there is going to stay. Yeah, yep. correct. So yeah, and it sounds like what they're going to do is they're going to terminate the lawn at that wall, and then from the wall to the lake is going to stay natural vegetation. I, it might be a good idea to leave a, a barrier of natural vegeta vegetation at the wall, so at least um, whatever's on the lawn is not going to be flowing into the lake, and it would just give more of a barrier. And they would still have a lawn, but there'd be some protection. Are you going to keep the wall up above the lawn, maybe six inches or so, so anything that flows uh, stops at the wall? Yeah. Um, or are you going to try and make it flush? Yeah, typically, you don't like to do that for water. You know, you know, and then if we channelize it, then what do we do with the outlet? Do we want an outlet downgrade near the, near the, near the lake type deal? It sounds like that's what the, um, yeah. the question is. But typically, you don't try to pond the water behind the wall just over time. That water starts to... Impact the back of the wall, and then. No. Okay. Right. So then they, 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 they put it, it into place 25 and a 50 foot, no build, no disturb. We are out of that. Whether it's a lake, whether it's wetlands, it doesn't matter. It's still a, 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 a um, protected source. It's a buildable law. It's a but buildable our, lot, but the 100 foot buffer, they have to show that it's not going to impact the resource. Right. Right. And right. it's up to them. Just like to all prove the other it. houses that are built have been done around the lake. You know, or just like anything else, when we got a wetland and we let them work right up to the 50 foot and do a two to one slope or whatever we do, like everybody else. Yeah, and we try to make it as protective as possible, realizing right. that, yes, okay. Yeah. They need a yard. They Do they need a 35 foot yard? Could they be okay with a 25 foot yard? These are all 10 foot's gonna, we're out of the 50 foot, right? We're, we're out of the fit, we're actually out of the 60 foot. Well, you have to be out of the 50 foot. It's a 50 foot, do right. not disturb. Do right. not That's build. That's the rule, right? That's the rule, right? That's it's the actually, no, rule that we foot, have, no but build. then there's also the 100 foot buffer that has a lot of protections. That's why he's here in front of us tonight, so we can protect, we can watch what they do and protect it. And ask them to minimize their impacts. That's right. And they are, and they are. As whether it's sufficiently minimized, that's what the discussion's about. So, I'm ready to make a motion, Mike, if, uh, if you guys have no more questions. Any more questions? Do you have anything to add? Closing statements? No, just once again, uh, from the previous meeting, it was my understanding we wanted to shift this. We did shift this quite a bit. We are out of the 50-foot uh, no disturb zone in the area that I thought was pertinent to the conversation that I was not here, but that's what was conveyed to me. We resubmitted the plans only two days or three days after the last meeting, so they have been in the office. Uh, I know that some people are remote and maybe they haven't had a chance to look at that, but we have moved it away um, by quite a bit. Keep in mind, it was right up against that 25 foot, no, no, no disturb zone. 
So earlier someone had just mentioned that it was a 50 foot no disturbed zone, but it's a 50 foot no build zone, which is no structures, and a 25 foot no disturbed zone. So we're 60 feet for no disturb. So we're even 10 feet further away from the resource area than the 50 foot no build zone, which is referred to is reference. That's reference to build, build a building that close. There's one question I do want to ask. Yes. Because this is going to come up in the future, I can almost guarantee it. Do they have plans on putting a dock there and how are they going to get down to the lake if they do? Not that I'm aware of. Because everybody on the lake wants a dock. Yeah, no, I, I, and I have to go through this, all of that to get there. Yeah, I'm not, not sure. to put a dock in the special permitting. Yeah. But, but not that I'm aware of. That, and, and it's not proposed at this point, and I understand, you know, are they just going to come back every year and ask? I don't know. I, they did not mention that they want a dock to me. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure this this little cove. I'm not sure how deep the water is there. I'm not sure if it's as I don't think it's as deep as the rest of the lake, but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. The that. neighbor right aside of him just was here last year or uh, this this year for that dock permit. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, over here, which is yeah. It's very hard to get a boat in there. It's all it's all swampy in there and it's, it's very yeah. shallow. So uh, more than likely they'd have to put a dock almost to Alicante to get a boat in there. All right, so uh, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion to approve plans, except uh, could they please, Bob wanted the riprap in that area. We just make note that that gets on the plan. Um, so to approve plan as. According to the motion, we want riprap along the driveway. Of the lake facing side, the downhill side of the of, of the driveway. Keep everything stable from going into the water. Okay, so a motion's been made to accept the plan with the uh, uh, added requirement of rip wrapping the lake side of the driveway. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, we do have a second. Motion was made by Dame Tinio, seconded by Bob Sweet. All in favor? Aye. Damon, aye. Bob Sweet, aye. Any opposed? Peter abstained. And the chairman's not voting. So it's approved. Unanimous. He abstained. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Make sure you let us know when work starts. Yes. Because there's going to be a lot of eyes on this. Yep. I, okay, let the owner know uh, there's going to be a lot of eyes on this. And if he slips up, if something happens, the, the least bit of stuff goes in that lake or within that 50 foot, it'll be held to pay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks for your time. All right, so the next public hearing we have is 13B Asylum Street. Applicants Jennifer and Mark Cosgrove. Hi. Jennifer? No, Karen. Oh. I'm an engineer. Okay. Are the applicants here in the audience? How are you doing? Good. You want some hot chocolate? No, thank you. I'm <laughs> sure it's still hot. There's some awful good looking muffins there. Okay. Everybody ready? You can stop. I'm Ellen Engineering. I'm here for Jennifer and Mark Glasgow. This is uh, lot 13B, Asylum Street. Uh, it is a back lot off of Asylum Street, uh, reported back in 2012. So this is a approved lot. It's kind of pre existing. Um, it has a 25 foot opening at the end. That's the entrance into this lot. 
We will be crossing with the driveway a portion of it, just the uh, the edges of it as we come into the uh, lot itself. We're closing the house outside is the 100 foot buffer, a well, on site sewage disposal system, and a proposed pool all outside of the 100 foot buffer. Um, in the far back of this lot, outside of the lot actually, is Meadow Brook, the uh, far from the 200 foot riparian zone. Um, we do have another source of wetlands on the back of the lot. We are far outside the 100 foot buffer of that also. Um, uh, with the driveway, it's 12 feet wide in the front of this driveway. As we're crossing the wetlands, we make it a little narrower to 10 feet. We have most wattles, 12 inch most uh, wattles with uh, silk fence proposed on both sides of that. A small uh, wall for grading along um, this, the um, wetland side of it. Uh, we uh, have an area of uh, one to one and a half replication. And um, I could not get two plus two to one replication. I could only get one and a half um, because I only have a small area of wetlands to work with on the north side. Um, the disturbance is under 5,000 square feet. I believe it's like 4,800 square feet of disturbance just to access the uh, area of the lot itself. Uh, the portion of the driveway where you'll be backing out and you know rotating your cars around as you pull out of your drive out of your garage will be outside of the 50 foot um, no build buffer. And other than that, um, most of the disturbance on this lot, except for the driveway itself, is outside of the 100. Okay, on that, that little uh, turnaround, I see there's a proposed landscape wall. Yes. And that's going to be made out of what? Uh, some sort of uh, landscape material. Wood, stone, concrete? Has it been decided yet? Stone? within that replication area and of course a wetland seed mix. Does the commission have any questions? I do have D, uh, DEP approval. I also have natural heritage approval. The fire department likes to have access to turn around on long driveways like that. Has that been taken into consideration? Do they have a place that they can put a fire truck? <laughs> In case no, they do not have a place to put a fire truck. You, well, you, except for the driveway itself. You may want to talk to the fire chief about what his criteria is going to be for that. For a single family lot? Yes. I'll ask him. Um, because they, I know they have a criteria. They need to be able to turn a truck around. So if they didn't need a T driveway or a Y or something. Any questions? From um, how many uh, houses are going to be in there? <laughs> One. <laughs> Four bedroom single One family. Yeah, okay. One lot. Uh, and then and, and they need to have a access for a fire truck? That's, well. That's what I was told anyways. I don't think not for a single family home. Made me do what? it. <laughs> How long is the driveway? 650 feet. How long is yours, Bob? 700. Well, I guess that's what the fire department anyway really doesn't have anything to do with us, right? It's not going to it's not going to affect the wetland the way the driveway is at the wetland, right? Uh, it'll be outside the buffer. I can make sure okay. that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Where, where is the replication going to be? The replication is going to be on the north side of the wetlands itself. Okay, so right on the outside of the driveway? Yes. I've proposed a stockpile area for the material that will be taken out of the wetlands that we're going to go, be going through. 
That's not finally every other is as close as I can get it to the replication area because you don't want to travel too far with that. Mm -hmm. So I've made that stockpile for the wetland plants and material as close as I can to the replication area. But outside of the 25. Am I seeing this wrong or is a stockpile area on the opposite side of where the replication is going to be? Yes, I put it across where you can. So that so the area where you've taken the material out is over here. So it's kind of in the middle, I guess. Between the replication and where you're taking the material out. So, I I mean, over here. See in this, room? this is the stockpile area, right? That's the stock, but this is where they're putting it back in. Right. This is out of so the way. So, right. they got to go past it. Yeah. Okay. Well, this line is the 100 foot well, right. Right. but that's outside. Right. Yeah. The wetland line is over here, yeah. 100, 100 foot, 50, so that goes yeah. like that. So all of that's out, pulls out. Right. So the replication area is for what if you, right. you, you're taking out for the driveway. Right. So that material is taken out of the driveway. The driveway's going through over here. Yep. It's good. They're going through over here. Gonna, right. They're going to use it over here. So the stockpile is kind of in the middle of the two of that. Well, he's the looking at. The driveway's coming this way. Yep. He's looking at this. Oh, I'm looking at that one. Okay. He's looking yeah, at that one. Yeah, that's the stockpile for this material that's going to come out here. Right. This is the stockpile for the wetland here. Right, yeah, it just isn't it. listed. That's why I was. All right. So, oh, right it says it, yeah, it says it right here. So, mm -hmm. so if, when you take the material out of here, you'll put it here to right. replicate it in right. here. Rough grade that in, get them, re exactly. do that. It's from here to there. This you'll probably spread around as fill on top, I'm sure. Now, the other question, it looks, the old grade is at 340 where that wall is going. It's, it's saying 348. Is that an eight foot drop? Where are we talking? Um, see, the, see the 340 right there? And it's almost 348. You have an eight foot drop? Oh, no, there? it's not. It's not. That's just an error on the plan. It's not. It's going to be at uh, 342. So this last contour is going to wrap around the back at 342. That's just an error on the plan. So this last contour will go right into the three. three contours at yeah, 348. so that'll be 342, 344, 346. Okay, that's so the 342. Yeah. You want to write that there and initial it? <laughs> We won't. It is on the other. Put your side initial right name or initial. It. We won't for that. We won't ask for a, a new print. Uh, at least it's right here, though. Yeah. That's not going. That's going to carry all around. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Any abutters? Question over here. Okay. Introduce yourself, please. Yep. Uh, my name's Leah Whiting. I live at 29 Asylum Street. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep. Okay. I live at 29 Asylum Street, probably about four houses down from this, and I have lots of concerns. Um, first of all, it would have been nice just as a suggestion to have the plans, the current plans, as they stand there in the meeting presented um, so I could see a little bit more detail because I really can't see anything from this. But my questions are, and um, I hope you're able to answer them. And if not, you know, we've got to look more into these things before we just throw a house in. One, we all have well water on this street. We don't know how much well water we have. Have there been any studies to show the impact of any more houses being built on Asylum Street? Two. 
if anyone has been down Asylum Street, it's very narrow on a good day. Two cars might be able to fit down. Has anyone done any traffic studies? And three, especially with construction, I can't even imagine. Three, have any environmental studies been, been done? I see that you've accounted for the wetlands and stuff, but you're gonna be clearing trees. And one of the reasons why Asylum Street is so desirable is that we have lots of wildlife. We have all of these different aspects of nature. And that's what we love about that street. So I think sustainability is a really big question that us residents of Menden should be requiring anyone who's building a house to answer for, instead of just throwing something in and you know asking questions later. Uh, Mike, can I speak? Uh, hold on. Can, can you, has a traffic study been done? Board of Health has been approved. Board of Health has so, been approved, uh, yeah. So my well should be fine. Yeah. No, no, we're not talking about your well. Hold on, hold on, she has the floor. I, I, I know Asylum Street very well, actually. I've surveyed a lot on Asylum Street. Um, I know it's a narrow road, and a lot of other roads in London are narrow roads also. So it's still a public way, and this is a, a lot that was approved in 2012. This isn't like a brand new lot. This is just a lot that they suddenly want to sell and build on. Um, and as far as the impact um, to the wildlife and the trees out there, this has gone in front of Natural Heritage. They have approved this. Um, they don't see that it would be detrimental to the area whatsoever. So. They're not doing a taking on it. So uh, if they were doing a taking, then they would have something to say. They're not. Damon, okay. you wanted to say something? We'll get we'll get back um, to you. Uh, they, Go ahead, mean, we just got to, um, I know it's tough sometimes because we, we all look at the environment, but unfortunately, this is the con a conservation meeting. So we can only, we should really only be looking at the wetlands part of it. Um, you know, and I get it. Cutting trees and all that stuff is, you know, where do the wildlife go? I understand your your concerns and and well water. If they were putting in a 25 lot subdivision, then I would say, you know, yeah, maybe there should be a concern about a well situation. But one house, um, you know, is probably not going to be that you know that much of an impact to the neighboring wells. But either way, it doesn't have anything to do with conservation. That's a board of health situation. Um, so I guess we just kind of kind of stick to the conservation side of it. That's what we're here for. That's all. Okay, can I just ask one, one, one thing? Sure, go ahead. You, are, you have the floor so, now. Go ahead. Thank you. thank you. I'm not talking about will they be able to get a well there. What I'm saying is there's only a certain amount of well water in the ground. And the more houses we put on this street, the more strain it's going to be putting on all of our wells. And if they're putting in a pool, I hope that they're calling a water truck to come fill up a 100 gallon, 100,000 gallon pool instead of using the water from our well, which is their well too. Again, that's, that's Board of Health. Nobody else, nobody else. Any yes, I saw your hand go up earlier. Right, introduce yourself, please. Can you stand stand up? Thank you. It's basically the question just for the plants. So my house is situated the two plots of land behind it are 13A and 13A. So uh, I guess the one question I had just the driveway access, obviously it's a, it's a long ways or uh, bad. Is this land here? I know obviously 13A is not being developed as of right now. My understanding was that with easement at some point in time, can you make shared driveway at any point in the future? Not that I know of, no. 13A. That was the only question with the opening. I know that you have been prior, I knew that that was uh, thought that the opening to the street was very narrow. So I'm sure if the, and as of now, I just wanted to clarify as it's being presented, 
So 13B would have its own separate access driveway compared to what 13 Yes. Okay. Uh, and then I guess the next question was just in terms of 13B with the development of the house and how situated uh, just with the well and septic. I wasn't sure as I originally looked at the plants, it looks like the plants itself is close to the back line of 13A. My only concern there is what's five point some change acres for 13B. I think 13A uh, is only about two acre lot and how that would just impact the distribution. I know those aren't all wetland considerations, but I wasn't sure if there was other parts going back in 13B that were buildable or how the plan to be. I tried. I tried not to uh, push this any further back because then it was just more disturbance on the lot in general. So I was trying not to and to, to take into consideration the driveway is already 650 feet. And, you know, a further driveway. You want to come up to the mic and repeat the question so that so, the, um, as far as the TV as audience can can hear you. They, this is okay. A couple. Of, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I think that works. As far as 13A is concerned. Um, uh, I really can't speak for it at this moment, but they do have their own access. There is plenty of room for a well and a septic system there. I don't exactly know where yours is because you're so much further away. Um, is your well in the front yard or back yard? So uh, that was the, con uh, the concern just from ours is that our well is basically on the back of our property line, which would be uh, almost on top of 13A. And then how that would be distributed with the septic for 13a the well for 13a in conjunction with you know, where our more so our well or septic is fine but then how that takes into consideration 13b's well and septic as well well the septic has to be separated by 100 feet so yeah. as long as there's 100 feet separating the two of them they should be fine. okay and that was the only concern for 13a is that is a pretty steep drop on the back side of their property Yes, uh, approaching 13B. So the issue would be, I guess, the concern, or I could see the problem being for future development of at least the 13A lot is that they would have to be pretty close to at least the back of our property line in order to have the buildable portion of that lot, which I then think can run into the septic and well issue there. Again, I know this kind of crosses issues versus the wetland, but I guess the consideration whether there was possibility without disturbing the wetlands where the plans would be for this particular home. They have to be 100 feet apart to look. So. Yeah. I'm sure whoever designs 13A that they'll make sure that they keep the father out away and they'll locate your well and septic and make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Okay. And I guess that was the, the main concern just bring in there too is just how I guess as future planning for really all what potentially could be three houses in that space, how to utilize the space in a way that obviously protects the wetlands, but also makes buildable and also protects the privacy, I'm sure, which everyone's looking forward to utilizing on that street, which was brought up earlier as well. So, so uh, did you get is. a satisfactory explanation? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah and I, um, I definitely, um, understand like the 100 feet and the separation there but um having been back there and just know what that drop is uh i think the cons my concern for 15 and i think possibly the concern on the 13b side of things will be whatever goes into 13a um it's going to be very difficult on the back side of that to build and you're really looking at having to try to find or really kind of jam in a home that's basically Within probably a stone's throw from the back of right. our uh, property. I hear your concerns. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Now I, I'm going to take over the meeting and ask sure. Do you own that other lot? You bought this lot, correct? So they don't know what's going to happen. That's right. And they're going to be in the same. <laughs> right. They're going to be in the same situation as you are, yeah. wondering what's going to happen over there. Uh, so, and these lots were subdivided out 2012. 2012. So at the time when these get subdivided out by the planning board, I'm not sure, but usually there's a public hearing. And that would have been the time to absolutely raise these questions. So, so again, and I understand, yep. I'm not defending anybody, I'm just trying to explain 
2012. It was 10 years too late to ask the question. And for yeah, uh, and for us, we were, you know, we're just recent. Uh, to the I, I don't say that to be a wise guy. No, 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 sure. It, it, you know, but I'm trying to explain because, like I said, these are established lots now, and they've been established for 10 years, right? The people that bought this lot, Jennifer and Mark, have no control over the other two lots. If this, am I understanding that there's two other lots? So, uh. Again, they wouldn't have been subdivided at the time if it wasn't thought that it was possible. So reiterate, we only we deal with conservation issues, trying to make sure that we protect as much wetland as we can. Those are all concerns with, again, how the town has been developed over the years. The town's 350 years old plus. Whoever builds on lot 13A will have to comply to all the regulations of the DEP, Board of Health, Natural Heritage, all of them. So I believe there'd be wetlands there, so they'll be in front of us. So they'll have to comply to them too. And their well and their septic will have to be separated and it'll have to be far enough from yours. I understand your concern. Yeah, and I guess. My central question was, I don't know if it was possible to take into consideration if that was a move back from the proposed plans without obviously encroaching on the wetlands part. I guess I went around about in terms of that. Well, it looks like they went to great pains to stay out away from the buffer zone and the wetlands as much as possible. I mean, I'm looking at oh, the, plan. The, the, the print here. They, again, they had to go in 600 feet <clears throat> after they move in. Ask them how they like shovel in the driveway. <laughs> but like I said, these people aren't responsible. Yeah. So it's unfair to to put them on the spot about what's going on with the other lots. You know. Um, hopefully, hopefully we answered or uh, tried to answer your concerns. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you getting up and asking them. Uh, anything else before I ask for a motion? Uh, Mike? Yeah. Um, Go ahead. On, on, yeah, this is, uh, this is Damon. So the, on the, is the house and anything else in the buffer zone or just the crossing? It's just a bit of the driveway, I believe. Just a bit of the driveway, okay. So there's the wells way away, everything's way away, okay. The wells no, just out. The well's just outside of the uh, buffer zone. Okay, great. Thank you. No other questions. So the replication area is is to replace part of the buffer zone, et cetera, that the driveway's yep. going to uh, take away. Got it. Thank you. But just for future reference, it says that there's potential breeding habitat for it, for the in potential vernal pools. I know how to certify vernal pools. Um, so if uh, there's any need to certify those, I could. I I know how to um, certify vernal pools. Is there any vernal pools up there? Uh, no, no, they're far away. But I just far I was away. just looking at the map. Oh, uh, oh. the potential. But they're, yeah, they're very far. They're very yeah. far. Yeah. But that should be. Thank you. Um, okay, any uh, any further questions? I'll make a motion to approve plan. Do I have a Peter second? Coffin seconds. Motion to accept the plan uh, was made by Damon Tinio, who was seconded by Peter Coffin. All in favor? Aye. Damon, aye. Bob, aye. Okay, that's uh, any nays? Again, the chairman's not voting, so it's a uh, unanimous decision. Uh, Can I ask the commission? Um, we uh, were supposed to be on the last hearing, um, but we didn't make it on to the last hearing. That was, uh, that was my... Um 
that was my fault. I had a, a lot of um, I was contacting with legal ads and I had made a, a draft for them, which I thought was sent. But um, I think that, that was my fault because I'm the conservation okay, so agent slash admin. That's OK, but yeah. we spent 125 on uh, certified mailings. Can, uh, can we get reimbursed first by the board? Is anybody here? From those certified mailings? Yeah, did you I, get I, it? I received it. Uh, the first one I did receive. The second one I think they tried a couple of times. You just weren't home when they, but we knew obviously what it was about. Uh, I said I would speak with finance about um, refund or because that, yeah, that was totally my well, fault. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. We need to worry about that. Explain to me what you're asking. We, you were supposed to be on a previous meeting. Set out. I sent out certified mailings, $125. Yeah. Couldn't get on the meeting. Well, we were supposed to be on the meeting, uh -huh. but we were not on the meeting. Had to resend certified mailings out to the abutters for this particular meeting. So now that's $250 in certified like, mailings. So yeah, I could speak with uh, finance about that. Okay. Yeah. We'll okay. find so out about it if, if, it's, if it's allowable. Yeah. Okay. If it's not allowable. You know, we'll find out. I'm, I'm not going to make that decision because okay. I don't know if it's allowable or not. Okay, okay. just ask. What I I'm what I do asking. what I do know is you've got an approved plan from the Conservation Commission. Welcome to town. <laughs> Welcome to town. But you you have Good luck with with your property. Can we close the public hearing? <laughs> public hearing. Uh, it, still consider it closed. The public hearing is closed. We'll uh, put together an uh, order of conditions for you and get it to you. I thank you very much. Thank you You're for welcome. your time. So, would we be able to sign an order of conditions with only two people here right now, or we could start that? I need the signatures, so. Right. Well, I mean, we could start right. signing. Start. And then okay. I'll stop in the office tomorrow, Meyer, and just leave it on the desk, and I'll, I'll stop in and sign it uh, on Monday. Uh, Tuesday. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so. Yeah. Okay. The next the next uh, item on our agenda is 23 Cape Road. Sounds familiar. The applicant is Stephen Butt of Blue Property Group. Permission seeking permission to remove, fill, dredge, or alter an area subject to protection under the Wetlands Protection Act to construct a one story warehouse building. Is that applicant here? Yes, I am here on the video. Oh, Connor anyway. Downey from Blue Water Property Group. And we are going to respectfully request that we continue this uh, to the next hearing. Okay. Does, does uh, any of the members have a, uh, a objection to that? I don't have an objection, but I guess I have a question. Before these guys bought it, the previous owner had some major sediment issues getting into the wetland, and we would never did anything about it. So I it's not their responsibility, but something has to be done about it. Um, well, let's let's continue it. And Peter, at the next meeting, get all the facts that you know of what like you say, something's got to be done about it. I can't re I don't remember what the actual issues were. So Get all your facts together and present it to the board. Uh, hold on, Peter. Yes, sir. Uh, who's helped by Joseph Road? Is there a reason? Um, is it reasonable to ask the applicant why they wish to continue? Uh, a question was asked why the applicant would like to continue. Sure. Uh, members of our team weren't able to make it because of the holidays. So scheduling. <laughs> Well, I hope that, I hope that uh, at the next meeting we can very thoroughly discuss. Hold on a minute. Let the background noise settle down. 
I'm hoping that at the next meeting that we will have a robust discussion. Want to come up to the want to come up to the mic so that everybody can hear you. Please state your name, your address, and then you can. Uh, uh, it's Bruce Howe, 5 Joseph Road. Uh, I'm just uh, hoping that at the next meeting that we can have a robust discussion concerning current condition of the property at 23 Cape Road and uh, why the enforcement order siltation issues down there have not been enacted on. Any of the members uh, know what the siltation issues that was just mentioned are? Uh, um, I cannot. I cannot. I, uh, hold on, on a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. Peter, Go are you still on? Yeah, Peter's here. Okay. So, so, three, four years ago, we got a call from the neighbors. The wetlands in the back, there was a lot of erosion that got away from them, blew past what little protection they had. Next door to it, the solar panels had a little bit of issue with sediment, but hardly any. So I don't know if we ever did anything, whether there was an enforcement order. There should have been, but uh, that was three years ago, and I'm, my memory's pretty bad. Okay, so Mike, um, yeah. I'll, I'll kind of fill in where Peter just left off. Um, we did have some wetland, I mean, uh, silt that got into the wetlands down there before blue before these guys even got involved in with the property the uh, the owner i guess of the uh, other guy that owns it now didn't really know what was going on down there bought the property the way it was and it was stripped of loom years ago so it was just you know it was just left unattended and it was on a slope and nobody paid attention and then until we found out about it and then when we when we did find out there was silt going into the wetlands, we had them go down there and right away and clean it up. And then they then they hydroceded all the area down by the by the wetlands to try to stabilize everything temporarily because there was you know talk that there was somebody that was looking to purchase the property. Connor came, you know, the uh, this blue uh, blue water came in in and started redelineating the wetlands. Um, Deshang went out there and made sure that everything that, that they had delineated was right, you know, on our, on our behalf. Uh -huh. um, went through all that, and now I think we're finally, correct me if I'm wrong, Connor, we're finally at the time to be doing the NOI. Nope, that's correct, David. Uh, okay. You know, there, there was some issues there, but the original owner who I think is still the owner I'm not sure how it's all gone down so far but um, Abe when we asked him to clean it up he got on it right away and took care of it and stabilized it as best as possible you know he sent people in the wetlands not no machines they went in there and they hand-picked everything as much as they could um, and tried to put put so fence up and did a bunch of work in there to try to stabilize it it looks pretty good. The grass grew. Now the applicants in front of us to do an NOI, and here's where we are. Okay. Um, go ahead. So I just uh, expand on some of those comments. I just suggest that the Conservation Commission might want to review their notes for December 10, 2020, March 25, 2021, April 22, 2021 and uh, also uh, review the um, recorded video of May 20, 2021, and June 17, 2021. You want to make sure our recording secretary has those. Just take a look at that. Those um, dates. You know, just take, just take a look, you know, and. Well, uh, I'm going to have our uh, recording secretary, if you give her those dates that you want us to review. Well, they're, sure in your, she, they're in your minutes. We don't have those minutes right now with us. So if you let her know, 
what you just said because I can she kind of busy. She didn't write them down. Make yeah. sure she writes them down. She will find them. She'll make copies for all the members, and we can study them. You follow what I'm saying? I do. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So please get it to her. I'm not trying to avoid looking at them. I just want to make sure when she pulls them up, she gets everything that you asked for. Sir, um, uh, may I take a note? So you want to look at seven ten. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Okay. Oh, okay. go ahead. I'd like to raise a question. Sure. Introduce yourself and your absolutely. Yeah. So, Chair of the Board, my name is AJ Sherman. Um, we're going to be abutting properties to okay. this project. So, naturally, we understand there's a continuation file, but we have a number of questions. And for us, we just moved to the town in March. So, we're having a bit of a crash course on all the documentation that exists, and we already see a number of discrepancies. So, we have questions. Okay. So that's where you see some of the frustration and some of the emotion. I understand the frustration, believe me. So, you know, the stormwater and the drainage. We look at this stream that is a wildlife corridor for us and for the community. Mm -hmm. And there's already been damage done to the wetlands. And then the plans that are that are discussed by Blue Water, there's buffer zones that are being encroached on. So that's one of the questions we have. Is how is that going to be addressed by this commission? So that's point oh, one second. Uh, are you taking note to this so you can be ready when we? Yeah, these are these are for the next meeting that you're scheduled to attend. Yes, we'll we'll be prepared to address all this. Okay, that, that's why I'm uh, allowing the concerns again. Everybody came to the meeting tonight and. I don't want to disappoint anybody. I want to give an opportunity to at least give you the uh, a heads up on what's going to be asked of you at our next meeting. Understood. Uh, okay. All right. Um, next question that we we noticed in reading the proposal was a discussion about the stormwater standards. Mm -hmm. sure. One of the questions we have is which standard is the plan adhering to? The bylaws amended. Or water to the state of Massachusetts. The reason for that is when we look at the suspended solids, for example, that they talk about removing with the stormwater removal. There's 80% uh, suspended solids taken out, 20% phosphates. We could look at the bylaws that actually says 96. So that's a question. Which standard is the plan adherent to? Mm -hmm. There's also a reference to uh, in the notice of intent. The riverfront, 7,600 to 7,700 square feet, is going to be altered. But the filing to the state says 3,900 square feet. Why the discrepancy? Why? So another question. So these are the types of things we're learning just in the short cool. time we've been on a crash course. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to the continuation. Okay. But we do have more questions. And, and I'm looking forward for the for you to be here to ask these questions. That's exactly what you should be doing. If you have concerns, do, do your due diligence and we'll have a robust meeting to That's all iron asking. out the facts. That's I, all we're asking. Believe me when I tell you, I appreciate that because that's how it should be. Well, and it's a rural residential area. Absolutely. So for us, it's one of the reasons why we moved here. Absolutely. This feels a little out of character for the time. Amendment. That's why I moved to Menden 40 years ago and I'm, well, thank you. I'm here to stay. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, you have the opportunity to say something now pertaining this. Okay. Uh, all right. So we're going to continue this. Uh, when's our next meeting scheduled? I think uh, January twelfth. If I'm January twelfth. Yes. I mean, uh, the second week. Is that fine with you, uh, Peter and uh, Damon? Yes, sir. Yeah. And the applicant? Yes, sir. That works for us. OK, don't call me sir, because I'm looking for my father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right then, so this is 23 Cape Road redevelopment will be uh, scheduled for January 12th. Okay. Um, all right, next on the agenda. Uh, we're going to review any activities since last meeting. And was anything left in the air? Bob is down. Review the minutes. Uh, thank you all for attending. Uh, I again, I apologize for the late start. Um, I apologize. Oh, if you want any. Oh, and Please take a muffin home. Yes, sir. Just, just an aside. Um, every time we come to these meetings, the, the issue of the 23 Cape Road is always the last item. Could we try to move that up to one of the earlier discussions? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I definitely um, I, I, I didn't put um, any preference to that. Okay, so but I'm, I'm sure. making it. So yeah, put the them first on, on the strong. Next time. Okay, thank you. But you're welcome. What what dates were the meetings uh, minutes for that we're approving? Uh, let's, we're going right to get that get to it right now. So December tenth, twenty twenty. What is it? Uh, October twenty seventh and September first. Oh, oh, for this. Okay, for today. Sorry, uh, I thought you were talking about the abutter, um, Bruce. So we no, the one the minutes that are out. Just okay. to yeah. make sure I. The minutes we have a, a meeting date is nine. Uh, September 1st, 2002. And I make a motion. Go ahead. Ahead. Motion has been made to approve the uh, September 1st, 2022 uh, meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, motion has been made, seconded. Motion has been made by Damon, okay. seconded by Peter. To accept the minutes of September 1st, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Right. Okay. Do I hear a motion for uh, to accept the minutes for October 27th, 2022? Uh, one second, I'm just looking at them real quick. Okay. I wasn't there, so I cannot. Peter was there. I'll step down as chairman to and uh, make a motion to accept the minutes of September. Uh, I'm sorry, October 27th, 2022. Peter seconds. Uh, the motion has been seconded by Peter Coffin. All in favor, I'll step down and uh, I vote yes. Aye. Um, any opposed? Amen. I'll right, I'll post those there. up today. Um, all right. Yeah. I'll post those uh, today to yeah. the um, to the site. Okay. All right. I'll keep going through them. Yeah. Anybody else? You guys uh, got anything to add before we uh, accept the nope. motion? Um, yeah. Anything? I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New oh. Year. And that. I had brought a. I had. <laughs> 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 right, and I'll I'll start Maya. Just anything that we're gonna probably need two two signature pages, right? Because we got those first yeah. two. We got two approvals. Okay, so I have the first signature page I gave to Bob. And so for need one for uh, what Asylum Street, and then what was the other one? A uh, two Nipmuc Drive. Um, yeah. So. So so if you leave two signature pages on your desk, I'll stop in and sign them uh, at some point. Okay. And maybe Peter can do, uh, well, Peter can't do that month, but he can do the other one. But. 
So do we have another? We, we've got one. This is for. Yeah, Bob and I signed this sheet for 13 asylum. And I'm going to put a post it on this one for two netbook. Yeah. Bob and I also the one for uh, yeah. You guys get a chance to go on down. Is that okay, Peter? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. All right. Um. So, uh, have you guys have a Merry Christmas? You want a motion to adjourn? Yeah, it's already been made. Second in it. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do we get a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you guys soon. See you Merry next year. Yeah. Take it easy.